Okay, so we talked about the concept of work in the previous lecture, okay? And we saw that we could define the work done by a variable force on an object moving in the same direction or being applied in the same direction as the object is moved is given by a definite integral, okay? So let's give a concrete example and let's talk about springs, which we mentioned in the previous lecture, okay? All right, a couple of things before we get started. First, we need a definition. Okay, Gang, Hooke's law, okay, Hooke's law states, and this is from physics now, experiments have shown, or he was able to show, that the force necessary to stretch or compress a spring from its natural position is, per, per, is <laughs> proportional to the distance that you stretch or compress it. Okay, <laughs> let me say that again, sorry about that. Okay, Hooke's law, the force necessary to stretch or compress a spring from its natural position is equal to or is proportional to the, the uh, distance that you stretch or compress it, okay? So let's make a note here. Okay, so if we, gang, if we imagine that the spring is, let, let's say, again, for the sake of simplicity, is just laying along the x-axis, okay, then in terms of distance, we're talking about some value for x, okay? So we can write like this then, okay, right? So the force is proportional to the distance x where an X is the distance that you either stretch or compress the spring. If you remember from your algebra days, this gang, this is an equation of variation. The letter K represents the spring constant or the proportion constant, okay? And, and in this context has to do with properties of the spring itself, the thickness of the coils, is it an old spring? Is it a new spring? That kind of stuff, okay? And so usually it's something that we have to solve for ourselves. Occasionally the spring constant K is given, but most of the time my experience is we have to find ourselves from the context of the problem. Okay, so this is Hooke's law. So who cares? Well, in terms of the, the lecture that we had in the, the previous discussion, we'll say that here, the work necessary to stretch or compress the spring remember this was the definite integral that we derived where the integrand is going to be replaced with okay hooks law or the expression for it which is k times x all right let's do something else let's make another couple of remarks okay Let's use, gang, let's use the following two conventions, okay? Okay, here's a spring and it lies along the x-axis, okay? Now we say it's, it's in equilibrium. In other words, it's natural state. You haven't stretched it yet. You haven't compressed it. It's just laying there, okay? This would be its natural length, whatever that is, okay? Half a meter, two centimeters, whatever, okay? So let's say that 
we have a condition where we're going to stretch the spring. Okay. If that's the case, gang, if that's the, the case, the convention that we're going to use is this. We will locate the origin of the x-axis here. Okay. And then we will pull on this end, the right end, we'll pull it to the right. Okay, so stretching will be done with this convention, okay? Zero along the x-axis will be located on the right end. And from the right end, you will pull it to the right, x number of units, okay? On the other hand, compression. Okay. In this situation, if the spring is to be compressed, we will locate the origin here, okay, at the left end. And then to compress the spring, we will push on the left end to the right. Okay, so I'm X number of units. And I, my experience is, gang, if we, if we always use these two conventions, whether we're going to stretch the spring or we're going to compress the spring, motion will always be to the right. And then that way, you don't have to worry about negative signs if you're going to the left. or You won't have to worry about any of that, okay? Stretching and compressing, if we use these two conventions, the motion will always be to the right in the direction of the positive X axis. Okay. Okay, so here's our example. We have a spring in its equilibrium state. In other words, it's nothing has happened to it, just laying there along the x-axis, okay? So its natural length is 0 0.8 meters long, okay? So 0 0.8 meters long. Okay, and then the spring force of two Newtons, capital N, those of you from physics probably remember that, right? Two Newtons stretches the spring to a length of 1.2 meters, okay? Stretches the spring, which was in its natural state, it was 0 0.8 meters. And then this force stretches it to a length of 1.2 meters, okay? So here are the things we want to find.
k. So first thing we want to do is we want to find the spring constant k. All right, find the spring constant k. Okay, now, gang, if the spring has to, if the force, the spring force of two newtons stretched the spring to a length of 1.2 meters, what kind of distance are we talking about here, right? Because we need to use this. We need to use Hooke's law in order to find the spring constant K in this situation, okay? All right, so here's what we have. On the left-hand side, we've got two Newtons. What's the value for X on the right-hand side? Okay, remember, you, gotta, you have to pay attention to the wording now. The spring is 0 0.8 meters long, and you're going to, this spring force is going to stretch it to a length of 1.2 meters. So how far does it have to go to achieve that? <laughs> Good. 0 0.4 meters. That's right. 1.2 meters. Here, make a note. 1.2 meters. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right. So then this tells us then solve this equation for K. All right. And the spring constant then has a value of five. And so the force is 5x. Okay. Part B. What spring force Okay, what spring force is required to stretch our spring Okay, what spring force is required to stretch the spring to a length of three meters, all right, to a length of three meters. Okay, well, it's 0 0.8 meters long already. How much further do you have to go to get the three? <laughs> yeah, similar to, the, to, the, to part A, huh? Similar to part A, yeah, think, think to yourself this. Very good, gay. Very good. Okay. Okay. And then part C, how much work is done Okay, how much work is done by the spring force
Okay, so here's where we're going to get to use the integral. Okay, so how much work is done by the spring force in stretching the spring from equilibrium to three meters? Okay, so here's our convention. Okay, so the spring is 0 0.8 meters in equilibrium. That's its natural length. Okay, how far do you have to go to stretch the spring from equilibrium to three meters? Yeah, we, good. We already said it in part B, right? We're going to have to move the right end out to 2.2. So just to, just to have a visual for this, okay? Okay, so we've moved the right end from zero to 2.2. And so therefore our work done Okay. Now, gang, I'll, I'll leave it to you to, to make the calculator um, value right there. But the measure of work, it's measured in units of joules, J-O-U-L-E-S. Okay. That's the unit of work. So I'm going to put a capital J there. So 12.1 joules. Okay. And so that's how you solve these spring problems. So in your homework, you typically have some problems where you have to stretch the spring, others where you have to compress the spring. But either way, the work is going to lead to an integral.